Continuing on with stream landforms, and so next up, a drainage basin or a watershed. So characteristic is every single stream is a part of a bigger drainage basin or a bigger watershed. And we've got very much a hierarchical structure uh, in which smaller streams fig feed into bigger streams. And so think of it like a tree. Uh, and so we've got the, 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 the stems from a leaf. Uh, that flow into a, a twig, which flows into maybe a branch, uh, which flows into the trunk. Uh, so the idea is everything flows into, or ev ev everything eventually meets to the bigger, the massive trunk of the tree. Same idea regarding a uh, collection of water, uh, i.e. rivers. Uh, and so collected by streams via gravity and slope, of course. Um, so every single drainage um, basin is separated by what we call a drainage divide. And so essentially a drainage divide is key to that is interflues or the high ground that separates one drainage basin from another drainage basin or uh, one that separates one stream, one valley from another. So here's a key term, interflues, a term that, well, you know, really, I don't know, we don't use it too often in our own language, but is used quite a bit uh, actually in the field. Uh, so it's essentially, like I said, the high ground that separates one valley from a stream, one valley or stream from another. Image to fall uh, here on the accompanying slide. Here we go. This essentially puts together everything uh, I said in the previous slides. So take a look at this, look at the previous uh, lecture notes, and kind of visualize the terms and the concepts. So like I said, every stream flows into a bigger stream. And so here are the ones flow into the twos, the twos flow into the three, and then the threes eventually flow into the one four. Now at the big scale, when we think about actually continental uh, scale, uh, Drainage divides are called continental divides, and so the continental divides are kind of these big picture examples of, of drainage divides or drainage basins slash watersheds. Uh, and so essentially the mountain or highland regions that separate large drainage basins. And so it doesn't always have to be mount mountains, as we'll see here with uh, Indiana and God's country. Uh, and so the idea, though, is continental divides, these massive, they contain many smaller drainage basins that flow into the massive, larger uh, drainage basin. Uh, and so the, in the, big, the biggest in the United States is the Mississippi-Ohio River uh, drainage basin. Uh, and so we'll look at examples of this on some accompanying images. Uh, pretty much all rivers south of the Tippecanoe River flow to the Ohio River. So the White River West, Fl West Fork, the White River East Fork, the Wabash River, the Ohio River, all flow to the southeast, sorry, southwest towards the Mississippi River, and they're part of the Mississippi River drainage basin. However, to the north, we've got this situation which we actually have rivers in the northern part of the state. Those of you from the region, from South Bend, Gary, even parts you know north of, of Fort Wayne, what happens there is the rivers flow to a totally different direction. Uh, and so where in most of the state, rivers flow from the northeast to the southwest towards the Gulf of Mexico, in the case of those rivers to the north of the Tippecanoe River, they either flow to the Lake Michigan or flow to Lake Erie, which eventually flow to the St. Lawrence Seaway, which eventually flows to the Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Ocean. So it's kind of interesting in Indiana, we actually have a continental divide. So here's the Mekong River. So the Mekong River forms the border between uh, many Southeast Asian countries as it begins in China and works its way uh, through Vietnam to uh, the South China Sea. Uh, and so one of the things is this can be very tricky. So the things that they decide to do up in China, i.e. dam the river, maybe for hydrologic power, well, that's going to have a very huge effect on people downstream when all of a sudden that river that they've depended on uh, now becomes a little trickle. Uh, and so that becomes a key issue when we think about rivers uh, when they go through many different countries. And for the most part in the United States, we don't really worry about that. Uh, you know, most of our rivers all stay and go um, within borders. But in other places of the world, this can be very tricky. Uh, and so there's no doubt that water, access to water, water rights will begin, become a huge issue going forward in a source of conflict. Trust me. Uh, here we have the uh, world's largest catfish, which was found in the Mekong River Delta at a whopping 9 feet, nine feet uh, 646 pounds. 
Once again, Rio Grande. So here's an example of where we share borders. And I don't care who, which side's which. I don't, I don't even care if this is pollutants or non-pollutants. But whatever is done on one side, of course, is going to affect the other.